Good morning, everyone. Just to say, if anyone takes wants to take advantage of a chance for a confession, I'll, I'll be in my our usual makeshift confessional, and mass will begin shortly. Thank you. Good morning. Please praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, to what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. accomplish the paschal mystery within us that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles. And he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damagos, he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly 
in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Helenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, he, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, 
we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us, the word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. <clears throat> Here's a question. Are you a life giver or a life taker? Do people in your presence receive life? Are they lifted? Are they healed? Are they consoled? Do they feel comfort and peace and even joy? Or do they feel depleted, sucked dry, depressed, saddened, and deflated? These are questions we can ask this morning because Jesus says, anyone who remains in me will bear much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing, nothing. Those are startling words. I don't know about you, but when I read that, that's like striking. What does he say? Let's just hear it. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Because without me, you can do nothing. What does that mean, you can do nothing? I mean, clearly, there are people who are not in Jesus Christ that are doing things. They're out there doing things. They're shopping. They're buying. They're selling. They're having fun. They're going out to the stores. They're doing all kinds of different things. They're hugging and laughing. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, I would suggest it means you can't do anything that's going to have lasting value in the kingdom of God. We cannot be life givers and producers in the kingdom of God, which is different from the kingdom of man. Amen? In the kingdom of man, you can do a lot of things. 
the world, the flesh, and the devil, they got a lot to offer you. And you're going to end up less, life depleted, empty, right? Or you can just entertain yourself to death, right? There's a book that I read in college called Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman about how TV had changed the entire society. He did a little history on the effect of TV on society. And it just said, basically, we are amusing ourselves to death. <laughs> are we life givers? Right? Is the entertainment you bring in life giving? Are the activities you do life giving? Right? These are questions we have to ask because without Jesus, we can do nothing. Nothing. How do you want to end your life? What they, do you want them to say at your eulogy? Right? What kind of lasting value will you leave behind you? Well, I would submit to you, if you wish to be a life giver, there's only one thing that you need to do. Remain in Jesus Christ, the Lord of life. Amen? Amen. So that's the story. That's the story. That's the image Jesus gives us today about the vine and the branches. It's beautiful. John chapter 15, one of my favorite in all of Scripture. I come back to it over and over again. John 15. Pick it up. Read it. Check it out. John 13 to 17. It's the... Jesus' Last Supper discourse in John's Gospel. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we get the institution narrative of the Last Supper where he says, take it and eat it, this is my body. Take it and drink it, this is my blood. But in John's Gospel, we get this marvelous last will and testament, the last, his discourse to his disciples. It's like the heart of God being revealed. Check it out. John 15, we get this beautiful, beautiful image that would make sense to this farming community, agricultural community he was speaking to, the vine and the branches. It's a simple, simple analogy. We get it. You got a branch. It's got to be on the vine. Otherwise, it's not going to bear fruit. But interestingly, I had a chance to do a little tending of a vine one time. I was on like a retreat sabbatical time for healing when I was young. And after my parents died, my brother died. Bishop Cardinal sent me and I went. And there was a retired bishop at this place. And there was actually a little vineyard, a little small vineyard. I never tended to a vineyard, but he brought us over there and he taught us how to do it. And it's true. You have some branches on the vines that don't produce grapes. They're like dead branches. They're, they're fruitless, fruitless. What do you do? Snip them. Cut them off. What's that do? It goes down and it dies. You throw it. You can burn it. Whatever you want to do. That's what Jesus says. <laughs> you don't produce fruit? Snip, burn, right? But the ones that produce fruit, the reason you prune the dead ones so the living ones can produce more fruit. Well, think about your, you and me. Think about yourself as like one of those branches, right? Or that you have various branches, and some of those branches need to be clipped, need to be cut off, because they're not producing fruit in your life in the kingdom of God. Maybe you got some branches that are producing fruit. Well, guess what? We want those things to be fed with a little bit more of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. That's the ones we want to make nice and juicy, ripe fruits that are going to feed other people, that are going to be life-giving. But the part of you that's dead and life-sucking, that part you got to cut off. And that's where we let the master do his work, and he comes with those shears and he prunes it. Now it's going to sting to be pruned, amen? It hurts to be pruned. No one likes to be pruned, right? Everybody likes, right, the pleasure. The pruning is the pain. Life and suffering often are God's shearers, right? Relationship can be the way God desires to prune you, right? Because you're going to bump up to one another. You're going to bump into each other. And you're gonna, you're, what's a little disjointed in us is going to rub up against disjointed in somebody else. And God wants to grind that down, prune it away, so that you can be a life giver, not a life taker. Amen? So, the process of pruning requires... Submission. The vine is just there. <laughs> the vine can't avoid the vine grower. He's just there, right? The vine grower is the one who decides what stays and what goes. Let God do his work in you. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. If you wish to be close to him, count on this. You will be pruned. <laughs> if you want to be a life giver, count on this. He will prune you and me. And it, it's not fun, but it's so good because it produces good fruit after the pain of the discipline of the pruning. Amen? Okay. So that's part of the deal. Now, how do we get pruned? Well, anybody ever have, when you were younger, 
a teacher or coach who was tough. <laughs> yeah. You remember those ones? Yeah? Right? Last night I saw a sister over here. She was here. I said, sister, some of your fellow sisters, they were tough, right? They were tough, right? I don't know. I grew up with the nuns, and I remember the Vulcan death grip, right? <laughs> Boy, did we need it. I know I needed it. I don't know about you. Maybe you were all angels, but no. Yeah. God's going to prune us, right? He prunes us often through the tough ones. When they're good-hearted, I'm not talking about the mean people who are just mean-hearted. I'm talking about those teachers, those coaches, those instructors that they meant something. They, because they loved you and they wanted the best for you, they wanted you to become your best self, sort of raise you up right, plant you deep. Maybe you had parents like that. Maybe you had good parents that were tough with you sometimes because they wanted your feet planted firm ground, right? Walk in that straight path, right? There's a beautiful song out right now called Talking to Jesus, Talking to Jesus. It's a guy talking about how his grandmother, he'd come into a room and it looked like she was mumbling, but she was talking to Jesus. And when he was a boy, his mom, he went into a room and she was talking to Jesus. And then suddenly he got older and he started talking to Jesus. Now he's got sons and he's teaching them how to talk to Jesus, right? Because if we don't do that, we're not going to be remaining in him. You want to remain in him? You got to be close with him. And the Catholic Church gives us something more than just words on a page or sermons or music our lessons to be taught. No, it gives us Jesus. When you come to church, you get Jesus. When you eat the Eucharist, you eat Jesus. When you're baptized into Jesus, you are baptized into Jesus. When you get confession, you receive Jesus. When you get confirmed, you receive Jesus and his Holy Spirit. That's about being grafted in to the vine. We are not meant just to listen to Jesus. We are meant to have Jesus living in us. You see, that's the difference. He's not just some teacher and we're instructors. Right? He's not instructing us and we are learners. He wants to live in you. All right? So when people see you, they're meant to meet the living presence of God. You are meant to be his hands, his heart, his voice, his ears, listening, speaking, as if Jesus is in you because he is when you receive him. Don't waste the grace. Don't waste their you got to become another Jesus. You see, Jesus desires to live his life out in the world through you. It's not that he lived, died, rose, and went to heaven, and then he's just chilling with the Father, right? No. He comes down and feeds us with himself so he can keep living his life out. But his life, when we read the pages of Scripture, was not just peaches and cream. His life was confrontation with the Pharisees. His life was instruction, correction. His life was the cross. His life was tough. His life was life-giving. People received life from him because he died to himself and lived for them. So if you're going to be Jesus in the world, you're going to have to die to yourself and live for them. You're going to have to let him prune you so that you can be a life-giver. He was a healer. He was a teacher, right? You're going to have to be a healer. People should come in your presence and something about you should put them at ease, should take the worries off their mind, should give them a chance where they can become who they fully are and grow and be healed of things. You're going to be, you don't have to be some guy on TV healing people, some, no, 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 no. You just have to have Jesus in you and somebody sits next to you and you know how to just reach their heart. You're not even going to know how to do it, but he's going to be in you and teaching you how to do it because you're in him and he's going to live in you. That's how it works. Jesus lives his life out in you if you allow him. You see? You see, that's what God does. And so even your suffering that comes into your life, that cross that you're bearing right now, right, with your spouse, with your child, with your pain, with that death, with that sickness, guess what? That's a share in the cross. St. Paul will say, it's he living in me, not I living. I fill up in my body what was lacking on the cross. It's he living in me. Even that cross is Jesus living it out in you. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Offer it. Offer it up. Unite it. Unite it. Unite that pain to cross, and then it becomes life-giving, redemptive suffering. So many different ways Jesus can live in you. Do you speak about Jesus? Do you speak to others about Jesus? I challenge you Catholics. Protestants, they speak about Jesus everywhere they go. Do we speak about Jesus? Are you afraid to speak to somebody about Jesus? Do you have fear to preach the kingdom of God, not in a judgmental, brutal way? No, just sharing the love, giving witness, giving testimony of what he's done and what he's doing in your life. Speak about Jesus. 
The world needs Jesus. I'm going to tell you, the world's not going to be saved by TV, by movies, by music, by entertainment. It's not going to be saved just by entertaining ourselves to death. If people are going to be saved, if they're going to have light, if they're going to have life, it's not because of just even us. It's because of Jesus in us. You see, we need Jesus. And then the world needs Jesus. So the world needs you. <laughs> God needs you to be him and let his live his life out there. All right. Now, that's the theory. How do you let it happen? How do you do it? How do you do it? Well, you're doing pretty good. You know why? Because despite COVID, despite the masks, despite the discomfort of what we're living through, you come here every Sunday. You're here. You are here. You're listening to his word. More importantly, you eat his body and blood. You're doing good. You're doing good. Now go out there and share the good news. Share what he's doing in your life with others. You know, I love it when I meet somebody who's not afraid to say, praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I love it. I love it. Because even when you're in the store, somebody says, how you doing? You know what? You might not be doing well, but guess what? You can praise the Lord when you're not doing well. So instead of answering, eh, he said, praise the Lord. Pray. Give witness. I need a witness in this world. We need Jesus to be alive in our community. If not, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Like, if we're not there to give life to others and not sharing his good news and not living it out in the way we live our life, what are we doing here on Sunday morning? You see? You see, we need, we need life givers in this community, right? There's enough life takers out there. I'm tired of the haters and the takers, right? Be a life giver. So Jesus desires to live his good life in you so you can live your life to the full. Don't be sad. You're going to cry. That's part of it. But no, 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 no. We know how the story ends because it's a victory in the end, all right? You're going through what you're going through, but in the end there's a victory. We know who's the king. We know who won the victory. And he's already in you, so you've got to walk with your head up because you won the victory in Christ. You're a baptized, confirmed Catholic. You have the Eucharist. You've got the power of God in you. Live it to the full. Don't be down. Raise your head. Live in Jesus. Let him live in you. And bring that life-givingness to this world so sad, so depressed, so tired, so beat up. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, that will not have the final word for the sheep who come to this church, who know who Jesus is, you're going to be his presence in the world. Amen. I believe in one God.
We have confidence in our merciful God who gives us whatever we ask. For proclaimers of good news and for all who share their time, talent, and treasure, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayer. For wise leaders of the world's nations and for careful stewards of the earth's resources, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater awareness of human trafficking and a greater effort to eradicate it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For high school and college seniors preparing for graduation and for the parents and teachers who have guided them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For abundant blessings on this community gathered in truth and for a renewed commitment to the deeds of justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the souls of Cynthia Caguana, Delfina Vega Mesorana, Aida Ortiz, Carlita Padilla, Ramon Ruiz, Jeanette Venturo, Antonio Quinones, Soraida Ruiz, and Jose Infante, and all who have died and for whom we have offered a funeral mass or service this past week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For the personal intention of Monica Casanovas, for whom this mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers and for the intentions that lie within our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. All knowing God, we are the fruit of your son's vine. Do not cut us off, but hear us. We ask this through the intercession of the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, and through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our second collection today is for our school scholarship fund. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, We Are Many Parts.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commanding himself for you and for our salvation showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever. And At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you sitting somewhere else for Sit Somewhere Else Sunday. Some of you moved like six inches from where you usually sit. <laughs> maybe next week, maybe next week we'll move a little bit more. Um, as you leave church today, maybe you can greet some of the new people that you might not know um, for Sit Somewhere Else Sunday to, uh, to do what the Lord speaks about in that first reading from, I mean, from the Gospel, chapter 15 of John's Gospel. So this week, Sit Somewhere Else Sunday, next week, Mother's Day, right? We're going to have a special blessing for all our moms, godmothers, grandmothers, anyone who's filled a motherly role in the life of another. Um, we're going to figure out a way to do it socially distant uh, to bless our moms. And we'll have a little gift to give out to the moms as we always do. Some of our mom, we want to remember our moms in those novena of masses. And remember, if you have your mom with you, that's a grace and a blessing. There are those greeting cards at the tables there that you can actually give your mom. The outer envelope is what you return. You can put it in the box or in the collection next week, and uh, we'll have those on the altar. Or if your mom's in heaven, you can uh, include her name in the smaller envelopes just so you can participate with your mom in those masses that way. And um, just the only other announcement I want to mention is that uh, we're going to have, once again, the blessing of seminarians with us this summer. Um, seminarians David Burkdale and Paul Kacharski are going to be with us. And I feel like it is, an, like once again, a great honor for Holy Cross Parish because the, the Cardinal personally approves the selection of the places where the seminarians will go. And once again, we're on that list because, the, because of you and uh, the loving affection and care you have for your priests. And uh, so we want to give them uh, great love and support when they come. They'll introduce themselves in a couple weeks, but now that that's finalized, I, I just wanted to mention that coming down the pike uh, later on this month of May. And uh, we could please stand for the final blessing in the St. Michael prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our defense against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God, God rebuke him, him, we humbly pray. pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn. I know that my Redeemer lives. 